Hello and welcome everyone to a new exciting Inspire demonstration. Today I'm going to use Inspire version 2015 to redesign a brake pedal. So let's open the geometry file containing the initial uh, design of the brake pedal. This is the parasolid file with the initial geometry. Uh, it has two parts, one is the brake pedal and one is the link. I can change the colors and to make it easier to understand. Then I will be using the anal analyze function to uh, check stiffness and strength of the initial design. As you can see in Inspire 2015, uh, the toolbars has been divided into the first one is the geometry toolbar with all the geometry generation and editing tools and the other one is the structure toolbar with uh, loads, materials and uh, analysis and optimization. If you like you can also add a new toolbar and assign a, a new name and drag any button that you want inside your toolbar so that you can customize it as you like. So let's go back to the uh, structure toolbar. I will first apply material to the uh, to these two parts. Uh, select the part, right click and material this time is aluminum 7075. You will notice that three new icons have been added to the 2015 uh, version. Uh, those icons are connections. So the new version allows you to create uh, bolts, screws, joints and contacts. Which is very useful if you have an assembly to, to work with, like in this case. So the pedal and the link are connected through a pin joint. So I click the joint icon and Inspire automatically finds uh, aligned holes. In this case we have only one aligned hole. So I will select that hole and I will create a pin. Just as easy as, the, as you can see. And you will see also a contact icon. Uh, so if I click on this icon, uh, Inspire will show uh, the uh, contact surface between uh, these two parts. In this case it's a, it's a real contact. I can make a bonded contact which is a uh, rigid connection and no contact. In this case I'm fine with this so I just right click to confirm. Then I need other two joints. Uh, one is the uh, is here, and the other one is here. So um, I click again the uh, joint button, and instead of selecting aligned holes, I select single holes. So Inspire will look for all the holes that he finds and uh, that he finds, and uh, this time I will select only these two. Since I don't have the car body and I don't have the, the piston, um, I will constrain these two pins. So to constrain the pins, just select uh, the support uh, button and click on the pins. Uh, this kind of support will allow rotation of the pin around the, the, the axis. I will now create a, a thousand newton load on the on the on the pedal in minus Z direction. A thousand newton and right click to confirm. I'm ready now to run the the analysis. So I click on run analysis and I change the name of the run uh, like initial design. Um, you will see you have 
two new items here. One is the speed accuracy item that allows you to select between a faster uh, solution and a more accurate solution. Uh, in this case, my model is not that big, so I will use the default accurate solution for more accurate uh, stress results and stiffness results. Another option is the contact option. Uh, here also I have two choices. One is the sliding only and one is the sliding with separation. In this case there is no actual separation between these two parts so the sliding only is, is preferred also because it's, it is faster. So uh, I'm all set. I just click on run and wait for uh, one minute. Well, the run is finished, so I will check the results. Uh, this is the safety factor. Um, as you can see, there are no critical areas. So I'm good with this safety factor. I can animate these results. And you might see there is a rotation here. So it means my contact is working, my pin is working and uh, I can check displacement. Displacement is about one millimeter. I can also check tension compression to see which are the tension, uh, the parts under tension and the parts under compression. I can ch check for misses stresses and other results as well. So I close the Analysis Explorer and then I, I will start creating the design space for my new uh, brake pedal. Here we are. So in order to create a new design space, I go to the uh, geometry toolbar and uh, I isolate from the view the, the pedal. I don't need the other components. And I click on simplify. And I have the holes function that finds all the holes in the model and allows me to, de to delete them very easily. Uh, of course I don't want to remove these two holes so I put the model in side view and I, I create a box, selection box, which includes as many holes as possible. So I will do the same on this side and on this side. So I'm done. So all my holes have been now uh, filled. I want to keep my uh, bosses, these two bosses and the the, the brake the brake pedal pad um, outside of my design space. So for this, I will use the uh, sketch function and the boolean function. So I just double click on the on the side face of of the pedal select create a new part so all the lines that I will be creating will go into a new part and then I click on this button to copy all the lines of the section then uh, there are a few lines that I don't need so I will select them and delete them from the model I don't need this line and this line as well just press the delete button to delete them and uh, right click to confirm so now I have a new a new flat uh, surface. Let me isolate it. This is a new flat surface, and I'm going to extrude it this side as well. And I don't need the holes. So this is. Um, part of my designable space. Of course it doesn't have to be so wide. So for this I'm using the boolean function. I bring back the, the other parts and I use the boolean intersect. Uh, my target is this part and my tool is this part. So Inspire highlights the common areas between these two parts. So I select keep targets in order not to delete uh, these parts and right click to confirm. Now the designable area, area has been divided 
and I just change the color uh, for clarity. This is the designable area. I switch it to design design space. And I am done with the geometry uh, modifications. I go back to the structure uh, panel. I want to check whether the new design uh, part is uh, actually made of the same material as the other parts. So I click on materials and I see aluminum 7075, which means it's, it's okay. Since I don't want my new um, design to be weaker than the, the current design, I will be using displacement constraints to um, ensure the new, the new design will be stiff enough. Uh, so I will apply a displacement constraint here, uh, one millimeter, and another one on the other side. So these two points will not move more than one millimeter as the original design. And then to make a, uh, this design easy to manufacture, I will be using shape controls. Um, first I will be using a split draw on the part and I will also be using a symmetry uh, displacement uh, shape control. I'm done with the optimization setup so I click on optimize and I um, I give a new name to the run, like optimization, and the objective is to minimize the mass, and uh, I want the stress safety factor to be higher than 1.2, which is reasonable. I'm, I have no, no issues with uh, frequencies, so I'm okay with no frequencies, and uh, as for thickness constraints, I will be selecting something like 6 millimeters as a minimum thickness for my part. Uh, 2000, version 2015 has the speed accuracy control in the optimization panel as well, so you, you can, um, if you want more accurate results, you can select more accurate. Uh, but in this case we are good with uh, the faster way and uh, also in the contact option you, you have the same the same choices so I'm ready to run the optimization just click on run and wait for uh, a couple of minutes well the run is finished so let's check the results can adjust the slider we can open the um, model browser to check the weight and while adjusting the browser the the slider we can check the weight in real time we got quite smooth results out of this run so, um, I will try to uh, to check if this shape is actually, actually good. Uh, Inspire allows you to run an analysis on this shape uh, straight uh, from this button. Just one click and Inspire will compute. Uh, stiffness, uh, stresses and everything um, for you. Okay, the run was very fast. Let's check the results. So this is my new design and uh, my safety factor is still above 1, is 1.348. The target was above 1.2 so it's good we can check the displacements it's 
displacement are a little bit uh, a little bit lower than the original design so it means we can make it a little bit uh, lighter just adjusting the slider and run again the analysis uh, if we are happy with these results uh, we can click on fit the fit function has been improved a lot uh, now um, there are no more failures and um, you can get good geometry uh, to, to be exported to your CAD. Let's see the results. This is the smoothed uh, geometry. Uh, you can see there are many small surfaces but it's a closed volume it means that you can run analysis on this part you can use boolean to uh, remove areas that you don't want you can merge this part with other parts you can do anything you you could do with uh, a cat geometry so to run analysis just uh, click on this and, and click on run The run is finished, so again, let's check the results. These are the results on the um, smoothed model. I see no problems, so I can I can export this geometry and I can now select any format because I have the smoothed geometry. That's it for this Inspire 2015 demonstration. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Once the concept shape is analyzed and found satisfactory, one can use the new polynerbs function to create a manufacturable and aesthetic shape, which can then be analyzed for strength just before manufacture. We will start by hiding the non-design components. Polynerbs is accessed from the geometry ribbon. Wrap is the option we will use the most. Notice how easily we create beams all along our model. We will now use loop to add edge loops to work on. Notice that clicking on the loops allow us to move the structure into our desired shape. We will now follow a similar process for the top part of the structure.
for members between. We will create short members using wrap and then bridge the gaps. We follow the same process wherever possible. We can conveniently move edge loops using the move tool so that the structure conforms. Notice that we can use the Add or Remove tool to add cages to the desired faces. We will show the non-design components to make sure our new structure does not interfere with their function.
we will now use Boolean to combine the new structure with the existing non-design components. We will now reconnect and reapply the boundary conditions on the new structure. Now we are ready to analyze our new structure and check its strength. Finally, we post process and review the results. If OK, we can take this new structure to manufacturing. Tin Smart